Welcome to Asian Uber, everyone. Let's take a closer look at the second of the newly announced civilizations, the Malians. In case you missed it, the Ottomans and the Malians are the two new civilizations that will be available to play for free in October. And today, we're looking at everything we know so far on the Malians. I upscaled and interpolated the trailer footage as well, so we can zoom in and slow down to take a closer, quality look at the units. I will also cover what's officially available on the website, as well as uncover additional details by zooming into the footage for you folks. So be sure to stick around until the very end. And finally, most of the viewers aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you enjoy this type of Age of Empires content, it would help out the channel a lot if you could support us. Thanks everyone. Okay, without further ado, let's dive right in. The description on the official Age of Empires website for the Malians reads as, The Malians focus on strong economic play, making gold and spending gold, and prefer strategic hit-and-run tactics with their unique infantry units instead of prolonged military battles. In Age of Empires IV, the civilization of the Malian spans the years from the 11th century to the 16th century. Uniting from a collection of independent kingdoms, the Malian civilization coalesced into one of the most influential West African empires in history, as well as one of the richest trading nations of all time. The civilization of the Malians leverages their influence and economic prowess to empower their civilization on the road to victory. They are able to construct pit mines on top of gold deposits to automatically generate a steady stream of gold over time, and can invest that gold back into their unique cattle food source. I do have more information on this, but more on that later. Through their military units, the Malians skew towards those looking for gameplay that focuses on ambush or hit and run style of combat, avoiding lengthy battles wherever possible because of their lack of heavy armor. This presumably means that the Malians will not get the traditional lines of at arms or knights as tanky frontliners. Bert has also confirmed that, apart from the archer line and siege units, every other Malian unit is unique and is not shared with other civilizations. Let's quickly listen to a short segment on this from the man himself. Okay. Every single unit for the Malians is different. They don't have a standard roster. They have a standard archer. That's it. <laughs> Everything else is different. Okay, so which unique units do we know of so far? Well, there are three units shared on the website. The first is the Musafari Warrior. The description for them reads as, The Musafari Warrior is a female warrior who excels at ambush and stealth tactics. Their lower health and armor are offset by their high speed and damage, supporting their hit and run ambush style of combat. Since hit and run is a characteristic of these warriors, they likely will be much faster than the regular infantry but slower than cavalry, kinda like the eagle or shotel warriors in Age of Empires 2. That said, there is an additional catch here. Bert gave us one more very important detail about these units and it's the fact that they can activate an ability to go into stealth mode anywhere on the map. Let's listen again for more info. So yeah, Age of Empires 4 indeed has a stealth forest, but this, uh -huh. this unit, she can go into stealth anywhere on the map. As soon as she attacks, of course, she reveals herself. So it's, well, yeah. Yeah, it's not like ghosts poking you or anything. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the story behind the, the hunter the hunter woman. Uh -huh. Actually, Musafadi like, is Malian for power woman. Now, obviously, we'll have to wait and see how they play out before we evaluate them, but I hope they don't become a very annoying unit to play against. I'm sure the devs will balance them in such a way that will allow for some counterplay. Next up is the Javelin Thrower. The Javelin Thrower is a skilled skirmisher that replaces the crossbowmen for the Malians. As an excellent counter to range units, they deal bonus damage and have additional range when compared to archers. They basically sound like a better version of skirmishers in Age of Empires 2, as they not only counter other range units, but they also outrange them as well. It will be interesting to see how they fare against high damage units, such as the Hand Cannoneers, Strelitzis, or Janissaries. The third and the last unique unit that is showcased on the website is the Donso. The Donso is an anti-cavalry hunter-warrior of the Malians charging into battle with their spear and shield. They're also equipped with a javelin which enables ranged combat and is automatically thrown at their target when not in melee combat. Here's more info from Bert. It's a unique spearman. It's different because he has two spears. There's more to it. It's not just like he's fighting with two spears, but he, he takes his first spear, throws it, so the first ranged attack, and then he can fight uh, the rest of the... Again, we don't have much info on how powerful the ranged attack is, but they seem like a better version of the generic spearman of other civilizations. That's all we know about the unique units for the Malians from the website, so let's explore what other units that squeeze into the footage that was shared with us. We do see a mounted unit for the Malians that resembles the Horseman line very closely, and all we know is that they are called the Sofa Horsemen. They likely have some special ability or stats compared to the regular Horsemen or the Night line, just like the Sipahis, but we don't have any other information on them unfortunately. We also do see a Hand Cannoneer type of unit as well, and they're called the Mustafari Gunner. Once again, they are not mentioned in the website, so these units could be another, slightly altered unique gunpowder unit for the Malians that we don't have much info on. We do see the archers in action as Bert mentioned himself, so no surprises there, and we also do see the typical siege units of Springles, Bombards, Rams, and, well, 
siege towers, because we all know how critical they are. They finally also show us a glimpse of their water units as well, in which we can see an arrow ship as well as demo ships. That's pretty much every unit we know so far for the Malians, and I'm excited to find out what other units they have at their disposal, since their combat is going to be unique compared to other civilizations. The final piece of info we get from the website is further information on how the Malians will play out throughout the ages. In the Dark Age, the Malians see a boost to their early economy and research thanks to their open pit mines. Using their early gold generation to their advantage, they're able to afford more technology earlier than other civilizations. There's also one very important detail not mentioned on the website, so let's listen to what Bert has to say. You have this special building called the Golden Pits, and you can build it on a gold mine, and it then automatically extracts gold from the gold mine. Automatically? Yes. You don't need villagers, and it also doesn't subtract gold from the gold mine. So technically, it's like an, infinite gold. An infinite gold hack? It is. Yes. But it's not a hack, it's actually you've just it's, put it in the game. It's, it's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> so. <laughs> Now, it's unclear on how quick the gold generation is and whether or not it scales throughout the ages or by other action. In other words, we don't know if, say, 20 gold miners would mine faster than an open pit mine, which could mean that the Malian player could opt to build an open pit mine on some mines and use villagers on some others. That said, there is no doubt that this is a direct population efficiency win for the Malians, as you'll need fewer villagers than other civilizations to generate resources. Moving on, the Donso, a powerful, unique unit, can help fend off early threats the Malians might face as they explore the unknown. We'll have to wait and see the Donso's stats, but it seems like they're designed to be a great defensive unit in the early ages, as they can use the ranged attacks, unlike the spearmen who get kited to oblivion. In the Feudal Age, the Malians can expand their trade routes with the new Toll Outposts, which generate additional gold for passing caravans. So yes, the footage we saw of the unique tower that hurled a cannonball at a ship is the Toll Outpost, so they will be a great tool to not only defend, but buff your traders. Just like the Mongols, the Malians are likely going to be one of the few civilizations in which trade is significantly more viable. Furthermore, the Musufari warrior becomes available in the Feudal Age as well, giving the Malians a new avenue for early raiding on opponents while expanding their empire. So yes, expect to deal with camouflaged hit and run raids from these warriors from the Feudal Age onward, or ensure you're walled before they can get in. In the Castle Age, the Malians can start producing units en masse via their gold barracks landmark, giving timely reinforcements to expand their hit and run raiding and ambushes. Expanding technologies for the Sofa Horsemen, Archers, and Donso means even more tools to put pressure on their opponents. For archers, the unique upgrade of poison arrows becomes available, causing arrows to inflict additional damage over time. I really do like the sound of poison arrows, so let's see how effective they'll be against armored castle age units. And finally, in the Imperial Age, the Malians can start creating global buffs through their Griot Bara landmark, giving the player different options to increase their economy, additional firepower to add to their siege attacks, or increase their military production to further hit their opponents from all directions. It seems like the Malians' late game options will be more diverse than the average civilization we've had so far. To cap it off, the Musafari gunner also joins the ray, giving the Malians another deadly force making use of their stealth. Through their own unique ability, they're able to activate stealth for a short period of time even outside of stealth forests. We've talked about this already, and they likely will have a radius of detection, so we'll see how they're designed in-game. Well, this wraps up everything listed on the official website, but do we have any additional info from the footage? Well, Bert mentions that one of the landmarks for the Malians is the Hunter Fortress, in which all units within its influence AoE goes into stealth mode. Hence, if you're attacking the Malians, it'll be best to send a unit into the influence zone to check how many enemy units are hiding in there. We also see a glimpse of the cattle generating building or landmark. It seems like the mechanic is to use your gold to purchase cattle for further food production, but I could be wrong. It will also be interesting to see how the Malians will interact with the market trading of resources, given that it seems that they will have a consistent surplus of gold throughout the most of the game. Apart from that, we do see their architecture and some additional buildings as well. Their mills look pretty unique, which I like, but my goodness, what on earth is that farm placement? Please don't do that in your games, folks. Moreover, we see what looks like another food generating landmark, as we can see a golden aura with a wheat symbol circling the building. One more quick detail I picked up is the enclosures next to the cows. It could be similar to the pastures for the Mongols where you build these 2x2 two two structures, but that's just my guess for now. We do see some more architectural work, and honestly, I love the look of the walls. I think they really nailed it to make it look authentic and unique. And the final extra bit of information is the display of this landmark. I could be wrong, but it looks closest to the Great Mosque of Jannah, so it'll be likely a religious or economic landmark in the game. And finally, apart from these, we do get to see numerous new scenes of Malian military engaging against their opponents. But there aren't any new units that we haven't covered already. Hence, with that, this wraps up every bit of info that we could extract from Gamescom. Well, that's all you need to know about the Malians so far for Age of Empires 4. If you enjoyed this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you could like and subscribe to Age of Noob. 
As a reminder, Age of Empires 4 is free to play right now and has steep discounts depending on your region, so be sure to check it out on Steam. Once we do have the public update preview available for us, I'll cover all other things for the Ottomans and Malians. As always, thanks for watching everyone, be sure to check back for more information about these two new civilizations, and see you all in the next one.